Hi everybody, I'm Alessio Iacona, I'm a journalist and I will have here the three person who were uh, before me are on the, on the stage to just ask a few more questions about what they bring to us during the morning. So I invite Luca De Biase, Vittorio Carlini and uh, Nicola Bienati here with me to take place here on the seats, please join me. <coughs> So we'll go on talking about algorithms and how they changing, they're changing our lives. Please. Or better, the, 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 the title of this panel is of men and algorithms. Uh, um, we hear about, a lot about uh, algorithms and technology. Now it's probably the time to talk about people and how uh, the life of, normal people and uh, professionals, it changes because of algorithms. So, uh, just because I'm a journalist and because look at the Biase is here, I would love to start with him talking about uh, not just hyper-history, but how the hyper-history is, uh, has explained to us during the morning the way history is changing because everything is being written uh, is affecting uh, the way professional and is, uh, information professional institutions are working, uh, dealing with information. Just in a world where Facebook, if it wants, can decide what you see about the world in your timeline. <clears throat> You're talking about n n publishers. Yep. Um, and it's a very old question, and everybody has already thought about that, I guess, here at uh, State of the Net. Uh, of course, it's a fantastic freedom to have everything written already, automatically. Uh, it's also uh, a great improvement uh, in terms of uh, uh, possibilities. Um, just to remember one small fact, uh, all the um, news about the daily financial information on uh, Forbes are written by an algorithm. It's called, uh, it's made by narrative science and they write actual articles uh, with no man or woman involved. Um, and that is uh, pretty scary. That is, it's happening. It, it's going to happen. It's already happening in sports and every other sector of information in which we, you have a lot of data and numbers to crunch and to put together with phrases that give some kind of sense to the numbers. And that is going to happen and it's happening. Uh, that does, and what we find in the whole set of the information overload is chosen by humans with the help of algorithms, and the help of algorithms is more and more important. I mean, it's a help, but it's also a, a push, a way to find things that the algorithm thinks I prefer. Uh, and that is something that we need to know. It's not bad. It's not bad because it's fantastic to have all this information at our hands. But then we need to know that we go to this uh, information with some, with the help of algorithms. And algorithms are not our choice. Not always. Not always and never if we don't know the algorithm and the, what's behind that. And, and that leads us to the other uh, great topic you addressed during your speech, which was um, algorithms are power. I mean, the ones who, re who, writes, uh, who write algorithms are the ones who are deciding uh, the shape itself of the world we are looking at. And this, you said, should be debated. Uh, we should confront ourselves. Where and by whom should be debated? What I try to say is that uh, we need to debate, and to debate this, we need knowledge, and knowledge is the priority. Yeah. And uh, if we have a 
progressive idea of the new order, it's about the redistribution of knowledge. Uh, that's, of course, it's a statement, it's nothing practical. I mean, somebody has to do something. And uh, what I think is that we have learned from the innovative culture that grow on the net is that we are those that need to do something. We all are those to, who need to do something. It's not the politician anymore. It's not the capitalist anymore. It's not somebody in power that has to redistribute his own power. It's us who need to go and take it, and we need to know more to win this battle. That is going to be very important uh, because there are so many things that are happening that are good. I mean, finding oil in a very, in a much efficient, more efficient way is important in, in a stratospheric uh, uh, way for companies and for all of us. And understanding how uh, the financial market is uh, working um, not only gives us the possibility to have uh, finally financial markets that work, uh, which we didn't see yet, but we, it also gives us the possibility to understand what is happening in probably the most important economic dimension of the world. So to know these things is the starting point, is not, of course, enough. Um, we need to understand how to write. We need to know how to write algorithms, okay. But we need to know how algorithms work, are adopted, have a, an impact. And that is much more complicated. Yeah. And when you say we, you mean uh, professionals or the, uh, a larger public, a wider public? I mean, all the people. Do, do you think that people here are aware of what's going on about history and the way it's changing because of algorithms, or, are, or aren't they? I think we are in a transition uh, in which um, not the majority understands what's happening. It's sad to say, but uh, uh, there is a minority of people who understand. These people are uh, loyal to something, they are loyal to a narrative in which innovation is going to create a good, a, a better place. Yep. Uh, but uh, that is, of course, a way to say that change is always good, yep. uh, which is to be debated. We need this digital humanities discipline to become much more known. Um, I don't think my, the majority will decide. Uh, I think the min minority will decide. I need a minority that is human conscious. And this is to begin a process in which the majority will know more. Uh, we will have to use new ways to talk in this domain because I feel that we are still too few to think about this. And um, when I look at the ways we popularize things, I think that these are wrong because they apply on emotions more than on rational parts of uh, our mind. I guess that uh, it has been said in the first speech today, um, the media is now relying too much on emotions. Um, a civic debate needs to be done between people that not necessarily like each other, but they know they live together and build together the, the future. Of course. Um, hopefully, anyway. <laughs> and Vittorio Carlini, please take me back from. Um, your, um, your presentation was full of, was, was pretty dense for me, but I 
understood that you, le you put in the air a pair of questions which uh, you left un uh, unanswered. Maybe we can try here, for example. You, the question are two, for example. Um, the first one, uh, if do we need new rules for this new kind of uh, trading market? And the second one was uh, about a growing number of companies which aren't going public because probably they don't trust, if I understood well what you were saying, probably they don't trust the new system or they don't feel the need, as they usually do in the past, to be public. This may be good or bad. For example, we know less about them uh, because they are in public. Uh, is this true? Is the, is the second question. So first question, do we need new rules? Good question. Uh, I tried to explain in a, yours, of course. In, 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 a, in a very simple way, but uh, uh, the um, the film is not so simple just to explain in a simple word. Uh, new rules. According to me, no. Because uh, uh, my experience uh, taught me that, uh, teached me that uh, uh, every time there is a new rule, every time there is a new technology that uh, avoid the rule. This is the real uh, situation in the stocks market. According to me, uh, to give an, an answer, uh, could be uh, a sort of this, uh, um, a situation like this. Um, I think that you can, I'm not against the technology as I told you yesterday. I'm not a ludist. I think that technology is fantastic. But when uh, you uh, manage the, the safe, the uh, money of people, you have to go slow. And uh, one uh, possibility could be to create uh, a stock exchange where, for example, governative bonds that are so important for a nation uh, are not allowed to uh, be traded as uh, a number. For example, when I, in other uh, situation, uh, says this, uh, the uh, people who are for uh, the, the regulation, etc., used to say, oh, well, uh, but it is impossible to create a market for uh, only governments. It is a logical approach. Uh, the quantitative easing of uh, the European Central Bank. I think that uh, uh, everybody of you uh, know what I'm speaking about. It is what I'm saying now. With the buying of the um, Italian government bond, Spanish government bond, etc., the uh, ACB create a wall, create a market that is dedicated let me say uh, these uh, words that is not correct, but uh, create a sort of market that is only for that stocks, for that uh, government bond. And in fact, now the yield of that bond is low. According to me, when you uh, play at, in a table, you 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 are not uh, you can't uh, ask for new rules. You have to manage what you have on the table, and there are a lot of possibility to create a situation in which the stocks, the title, the um, bonds that you consider are important because I remember they are not only a number, but the, behind a government bond, there is the debt of a, a country, and the debt of a country is the life, is our life, unfortunately, because you pay taxes, you have the services. It's the history of a country. I, I, in, in this, I am convinced. You can't let uh, investors' speculation to uh, manage as they want these uh, bonds but not with rules, with, i give you an example, creating a situation in, in, in which they are not allowed to do it, because the rules uh, uh, doesn't work. Sorry, the rules don't work. 
every time I saw that it, they don't work. Vittorio, just another question. You, you went back to the people, talking about uh, the depth of the country and so on. So let's talk about people. Are we going towards um, a future where the market trading doesn't need us anymore? It's working alone. I mean, automatic trading be becoming always, always more relevant. And so working in, with great efficiency without our, uh, uh, us interfering with it. Well, first of all, <clears throat> who uh, build, who create uh, these software? A man. Mm. So uh, the, the source, according to me, will be never so perfect. We will be always uh, in ineff inefficiency. And in fact, uh, a lot of problems are linked uh, with uh, the automatic trading from uh, the uh, point of view of a stabil uh, stability of the stock market. Mm, I, I, during my speech, uh, I told you that, uh, okay, in uh, the stock market, uh, the great flash crash uh, never happened again. But uh, in uh, one day, if you, go, if you look at uh, the Nanex uh, research, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven micro flash crash a day on a single stock. This is a great problem. I repeat to you, if you, the question is, what do you want a stock exchange is for? If you want, but I, I don't want uh, uh, to give a moral uh, answer. If you want, that a stock exchange is a sort of casino in which uh, people who uh, have a, mo um, a lot of money to invest in terminal, in uh, power computation, etc., etc., et et you will be uh, in a stock exchange in which there, are, there will be all these problems. If, on the contrary, if you ask uh, to a stock exchange that, for example, is a, an alternative way for a company for funding money, you have to uh, think uh, and to analyze which are the situations that are developing. I conclude, I'm not conservative. I think that in, in this field, to be conservative could be more, to be more innovative than the people that use to be, I am innovative, because they only want to make money from money. Last question, uh, is it true to say that, uh, sorry. Last question, uh, as I said before, is it true to say that uh, a growing number of uh, companies aren't going public because they don't trust new systems? Well, <clears throat> the phenomena is uh, uh, more r relevant from the side of investors. I mean, a pension fund in the United States uh, are afraid of investing, but it's natural because if you are a pension funds, a long-term investors, what uh, uh, you expect? You expect that if you invest your money, the pension of the workers at, uh, for example, an asset that uh, you entry at the level of $10, uh, if you uh, find these uh, um, uh, stocks at the level of uh, $2 without any reason, uh, it is a great problem. And the report shows that the long-term investors uh, are not so happy to enter the stock exchange. From the point of view of the company, it is uh, more complicated because uh, it is linked. What I wanted to say is, is the following. The instability of the market that is also caused by the presence of these uh, automatic trading uh, in particular high frequency trader uh, make company not so confident to enter the stock exchanges but uh, there is no a uh, link uh, cause effect between uh, the two phenomena I, I, I want to be honest there is not a, 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 an automatic cause effect between the two phenomena thank you very much and Last but not least, Nicola Bianati. Um, you know, you showed us this presentation with all these 
technological, let me say, brute force. I mean, uh, this uh, calculation power, the way it works, the way you use it uh, with other technologies to find gas in the Mediterranean, which is something very important for every one of us in many different ways. Um, the first question would be, how do you bring this, te this technology to the field? I mean, you, you work with research and development, and I, as far as I can tell, research and development is working on ideas, developing ideas, and then uh, the, the jump to bring them to the field is not that easy, because you, you need to move uh, tools and people, and it costs millions of dollars or euros, uh, depends uh, <laughs> which, with which kind of currency you're paying. And then you get in the middle of the Mediterranean and you find out gas. So how difficult was to do this, to bring all this technology to something so practical and so efficient and successful, of course? But you know, the, the reason is very simple. I joined my company 15 years ago, or probably less than that, but not the point. And since the beginning, I did my work side by side with the people who are using it with the people that are using the program that I develop in order to process the data. Please. Uh, okay, sorry. So the, the point is that is the, the, the answer is very simple. Since the beginning, I worked side by side with the people that are using my programs. And so everything I do uh, has an immediate feedback from them. Mm. And this is the, the beauty and the pain of my work. It's the beauty because uh, everything you do is used by someone because if I do something that is, if I do the most beautiful research uh, that it can produce the most beautiful result, but no, no one is going to use it, uh, there's no point in doing it for me. At the same time, it's, it's a pain because whenever something is not working, they are calling you. <laughs> so there is a continuous exchange between uh, the ideas that you're experimenting in a laboratory, let me say, and uh, the, the, the real field, the way you're experimenting them and making them work. Exactly. And what's the future of this kind of uh, technology you're using? Because it's not just power of computers, it's not just uh, the algorithms. It's, I mean, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, in the long term, uh, how, how are this technology developing? What do you see in the, or in the next future? I mean, what's, the, what's next after this, this uh, great discovery? Uh, it's difficult to see because uh, you know many many things can can change. Uh, what they're asking us at the moment uh, is to do with with what we do with greater accuracy, because uh, there are uh, some limitation uh, in the in the nature of the problem that uh, that we are facing. Because uh, probably I don't know if you notice it, but uh, in the, the point is that in medical imaging you can acquire a lot of information by moving around the object. We cannot move around the object, we are fixed to stay on the surface. And so that means that uh, we are not collecting all the, the information uh, that we should collect in order to provide a faithful, completely faithful image. So for me what is important is to continue to provide people the tools to integrate they, their knowledge into our software to fill the gap of information that is not coming from the data, the DR data that we collect uh, on the field. And uh, it, this is something that is uh, unavoidable unless uh, sometime in the future we'll be able to collect the data directly from below, which is not, not possible. Uh, and then uh, everything will be linked to, to the evolution of the technologies because if, if you're going to have most powerful computers than those that we have today, and as far as it's foreseeable today, this is something that is going to happen in the future, then we'll be able to, to deploy in any case more accurate algorithms, faster algorithms, and then for example, something that is very important in, in our industry is to allow making scenario analysis, which means uh, do completely different processing with the same data and provide different scenarios according to which those who are in charge of taking decisions may take more reliable and better decisions. I have another question, which is how many people are working together to the project you explained. But before this, uh, is there a question for the public? Because uh, this gentleman before had the, the chance to present their ideas, but they didn't have the chance to take questions. So, if you have one. 
There you go. Stay there. I'll take the I'll take the mic. It was just uh, a question about the financial markets and and the graph that you showed of the increasing use of robots uh, to make decisions. I shared it on Twitter. Somebody came back and said, within 20 years, we will have no people working in the financial sector. It will all be automated. Um, now, I'm skeptical about that, but given the statistics that show that investments are pretty random when done by people, what do you think is the likelihood of that in 20 years' time? Was it clear? Should I have him uh, ask again? Yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Keep it simpler. It's my funny Scottish accent. Um, when I shared your graph of the increasing use of robots in the financial markets, one of my friends responded that in 20 years' time there will be no human intervention in the world of finance. And given how random some of the financial decisions appear to be, how likely is it that we will just trust technology and algorithms to manage finances? So in 20 years, uh, okay. No, 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 I understand. Hai tradotto tu? Okay. No, no, ho capito adesso. I have not the crystal ball. Um, um, it's difficult uh, to, to, to say. In the, uh, in the industry of finance, what I'm looking is, for example, that uh, there are less and less employees, for example, in uh, some fields of uh, finance. For example, uh, in uh, the execution uh, part of the trades uh, that uh, was uh, a part of the trading uh, in which the human being uh, was present, now uh, the pe people uh, are less present. Um, we have, do you ask if you, we need to have trust in a uh, machine? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, we have to trust uh, people who create the model that uh, elaborate the machine. Uh, but uh, it's difficult uh, to understand uh, if uh, these people are really able to un understand which is the situation of a company. The difference is between uh, a physician, a uh, an engineer that uh, built a software and uh, don't know anything about uh, uh, goods, about trend, about uh, uh, um, market, about uh, economy, about uh, the reality of that company. You, you could say, well, but also the economic uh, people don't know about this. Yes, but uh, I agree with uh, uh, De Biase. According to me, I, I, I don't want to give you an, ex uh, an answer. According to me, it's important to understand that there is this problem. I don't know if in the future uh, the machine will decide everything of our life or no. But it's important to understand that the machine is creating larger and larger um, difference between a stock that should represent a part of reality, a company, and this reality. This is a great problem. According to me, it's not so important to think that we have to trust it's important, but it is a problem that we will face in the future. Now, the problem is what we want the stocks exchange uh, work for. for. I give you an example for fund, funding money, but the stocks exchange uh, are useful for our state. Um, in the United States, and I finish, yep. in the United States, uh, uh, without uh, the growth uh, of the stocks exchanges, 
the wealth that was produced in the last uh, decade uh, would be lower and lower. Because of this, in the United States, uh, people used to invest. I ask you, if you, uh, because this is happening, if people uh, is afraid because he looks all these uh, up and down of the, tr of the index, and you lose the investment of all these people, what will happen? That the stock exchanges will be traded only by professional uh, people and not but uh, by that uh, long-term invest, uh, investment uh, uh, funds, for example, uh, that uh, created the wealth of the United States in the past. Again, it is a problem. So, um, I'm seeing signs uh, that tell me to stop, so I thank this gentleman for this morning giving so much thank to you. us. Thank you.